the continued safety of the public staff members in the Boston Zoning Commission. The open meeting law requires that I notify the public that this virtual meeting is being recorded. Please be advised that an audio and video recording of this uh, meeting is being made. At this, at this time, we're gonna uh, introduce the interpreters. Uh, the interpreters will introduce themselves at uh, this morning's hearings. Hello, uh, my name is Hauran and I am the uh, Mandarin interpreter for uh, this morning's meeting. My name is Hauran. I am the Mandarin interpreter for this morning's meeting. When the director opened the meeting room, he opened the meeting room and put the numbers to the Mandarin or Chinese. You can hear my Mandarin interpreter. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, good morning. My name is Evan Kwa, and I'm a Cantonese chess interpreter this morning. And uh, uh, I think I'm going to talk to you about the Chinese language. I'm going to talk to you about the Chinese language. I'm going to talk to you about the Chinese language. I'm going to talk to you about the Chinese language. Good morning, everyone. My name is David Molina, and I will be the Spanish interpreter for this session. Buenos días a todos, mi nombre es David Molina y voy a ser el intérprete de español para esta reunión. Le damos la bienvenida a la, a la Comisión de Zonificación de la Ciudad de Boston. En este día tendremos una reunión, una sesión abierta para presentar el proyecto de la Avenida Western 287. Esta es una reunión abierta al público, por lo tanto esta reunión va a ser grabada. Si usted quiere ver esta reunión, usted va a poder acceder a la grabación de esta reunión. En esta tarde también, en esta mañana, perdón, contaremos con el servicio de interpretación y también todos aquellos que puedan escuchar en otro idioma van a poder acceder a los canales de interpretación que van a aparecer en la parte de abajo de su pantalla. Muchísimas gracias. Thanks, Jay. We should be, uh, we should be good to go now. All right, thank you. At this point, we'll take a roll call of zoning commissioners. Uh, Jill Hatton. Present. Michael Nichols. Present. Mike DeMello, are you recusing on this? I, I am here, but I'll be recusing on the first item. Okay. Nelson Arroyo. Nelson. I did. David Ma. Did you hear me? Did he hear me? Yeah, yeah, they're all set. David Ma. Drew Left. Present. Aisha Miller. Present. Midori Morikawa. Present. Ricardo Ostrich. Present. And Jay Hurley is present. Hey, did you hear me? Who's, who's speaking? That's Nelson. Nelson, I got you. Yeah, I didn't get David. Okay, thank you. David, you did. Right now, David's not here. If he joins us, I'll let you know. 9 a.m. public hearing. This is a hearing before the Boston Zoning Commission to consider a petition for the approval of MAP Amendment Application Number 774 and a petition for approval of development plan for plan development area number 148. 287 Western Ave, Austin. The hearing was duly advertised February 8th in the Boston Herald. In the Boston Zoning Commission hearing on petitions, the proponents will first present their case and subject to questioning by members of the commission only. We are taking support and opposition at the same time. If you're planning to testify, please take the time to verify that your computer microphone is active. Click the hand icon on your Zoom control panel. This will signal staff you would like to speak. When your hand is raised, your hand icon will be blue. If you are calling into the media and would like to testify, please dial star nine to raise your hand. When I call for public testimony, a member of the staff will announce your name and allow you to speak. You must unmute your microphone. Your webcam will not be active. Please give your full name, any group affiliation, and announce whether you support or oppose the petition. Each speaker will be allowed up to two minutes. If necessary, we'll advise you when you have 30 seconds remaining at that time, please summarize your remarks so the meeting can continue and others may be heard. Finally, the proponents are allowed a brief five to 10 minute period for rebuttal if they desire, if they so desire. Please begin the presentation.
Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Quinn Valsage. I'm a Senior Project Manager in the Development Review Team at the BPDA. Uh, the proposal before you is for a MAP amendment for a PDA development plan for plan development area number 148, which accompanied an Article 80 large project known as the 287 Western Avenue project in the Alston neighborhood of Boston. The proposed projects for a mixed use building containing approximately 92,000 square feet of gross floor area comprised of office and R&D space, replacement space for a Boston EMS facility, shared amenity space, and approximately 3,000 square feet of ground floor public co-working and meeting space. The project includes parking for up to 36 vehicles, indoor bicycle parking space for at least 36 bicycles, and will be designed to target lead gold standards. The project will construct a low stress bike lane along Western Avenue to link the broader community network in line with what was envisioned in the Western Avenue corridor rezoning study. Uh, the proponents are providing approximately 1700 square feet of space for Boston EMS to continue the operation of a two ambulance bay facility on the site for at least the next 10 years. And I hand it over to my colleague, Ted Schwartzberg from the BPDA zoning compliance team to say a few words before the proponents begin their presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Quinn. I'm Ted Schwartzberg, uh, Assistant Deputy Director for Zoning Compliance at the BPDA. Uh, I have three slides on the planning and zoning context that guided staff review of this proposal. Uh, in terms of planning, uh, this was uh, in the uh, Western Avenue corridor study and rezoning area. Uh, this was completed in 2022, and I believe you've seen a few other proposals come through this area. It, it's known as Wacker Z. Uh, other policies that inform staff review uh, were smart utilities policy and EV readiness, readiness policy, complete streets and BTD park and maximums, uh, and bike parking and uh, transportation demand man management policies as administered by the Boston Transportation Department. Uh, and in the neighborhood context, this is uh, adjacent to Barry's Corner, uh, with uh, Harvard Avenue to the east. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, in the second paragraph on the right, uh, the most relevant goals from the planning process uh, were for this specific part of the uh, study area and the Barry's Corner node. Uh, the plan envisioned a denser mixed use retail office lab and uh, uh, job serving neighborhood uh, that has 24 seven uh, access, uh, 24 seven node, with transit access uh, and gathering spaces for Alston Brighton and public realm enhancements such as street trees and transit stop amenities. Next slide, please. Uh, in terms of zoning, uh, this is um, compliant with the Wacker Z zoning that I mentioned earlier. Uh, and that zoning itself is uh, consistent with the planning process that preceded it. Uh, in terms of use, New lab space is consistent with planning for this specific node uh, and provision of uh, civic oriented uses on the ground floor, including the EMS space is also consistent with the planning. Um, the dimensions are consistent with planning uh, and in terms of public realm uh, setbacks and public realm improvements that Quinn mentioned earlier are also consistent with planning. Uh, this is consistent with the Wacker Z and complete streets guidelines uh, and then consistent with transportation uh, regulations that I mentioned earlier, as well as high performance building envelope uh, accommodation of uh, wider and Western a widened Western Avenue, and then creation of space for Boston EMS. And uh, with that, I conclude the planning and zoning context slides and hand it off to the proponent team. Thank you. Thank you, Ted. <clears throat> Thank you, Ted. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mike Domenico with King Street Properties. Uh, I'm one of the partners here, and I'm also joined by Chris Rainier from Goulson Stores, our legal counsel, as well as Matthew Pierce and Derek Johnson from Perkins and Will, who are the architects for the project. Uh, I just wanted to start off by thanking the commission for your time this morning. I also wanted to thank Quinn, uh, Director Jemison, and the BPDA staff for helping us navigate through this project and also wanted to recognize Councillor Braden, our impact advisory groups and the community for their time and valuable feedback on our project. Um, so with that, we just wanted to begin with a little context map here on the star. You can see where the site is located for 287 Western Avenue. It's located near the intersection of Everett Street that runs north south during uh, in the center of the page and Western Avenue running east west. Next slide, please. Uh, zooming in for a little bit more context of the neighborhood, uh, you can see we're located to the west of Smith Field, and the road that's running on the north side is Soldiers Field Road. 
uh, the sites directly to the west of 287 and directly to the south of 287 are currently under development uh, with our larger mixed use development known as Alston Lab Works. Next slide, please. Uh, these images show the existing site conditions. Uh, images number one and number, number two show the view of the site looking from Western Ave North. You can see the building is a two-story, um, currently vacant uh, brick office building. And on images three and four, they're also from Western Avenue, looking on the east side of the site where you can see uh, a currently vacant auto body shop. The other use on the site uh, is it's currently home to the Boston EMS, which uses it as uh, garage space for their emergency vehicles. Next slide, please. Uh, so the scope of this project, uh, the main use here is graduation space for life science research and development companies. And I'm sure uh, most of you are aware and have read about the amount of life science uh, space that's been developed in the past few years in the greater Boston area. And I wanted to address that uh, first by saying that we at King Street are long-term uh, believers in the life science industry and the life science space. It's very important to our economy here, and it's critical for us to all live healthier lives. Uh, secondly, what we're proposing to build here is uh, a use that is going to complement the development in the area, not compete with it. And what I mean by that is that we're building space that is specifically designed for companies that are ready to leave um, an incubator space and grow into their first demised space. Now, they may not be ready to take a large block of space and take on the capital expense associated with building out that real estate. So we are going to be delivering pre-built, fully furnished suites that are designed for these early stage companies. Another element of our project is a flexible high base space uh, that's located on the east side of the building. Um, what that means is this is a space that's flexible with high ceiling heights that can be used for companies that are involved with small scale manufacturing or robotics. Uh, another use here is what you can see on the image in front of you on the right hand side on the first floor is a public co working space. And we designed this as a community benefit for the use of local residents um, with the rise and uh, popularity of remote work and working from home. We wanted to create a space that would invite the community in and provide a space for them to work outside of their living rooms without going into the office. So this will be a space that has free Wi-Fi, reservable conference rooms and desk space for people to work outside of their homes. Um, another big part of our public benefit that was mentioned is that we're providing a brand new home for the Boston EMS. We've been in discussions with uh, Chief Cooley and have come to an agreement on the design of the space and the terms of the agreement that allows them to stay in the project for the long term. Uh, a very important part of that agreement is we've also arranged for temporary space for them to stay in the neighborhood in, the neighborhood, uh, in an adjacent building while this project is under construction so that there'll be no downtime in service to the neighborhood. Um, and then on the next slide, I'll go through some of the uh, elements that show our alignment with the Western Avenue corridor study that Ted had mentioned. So the image on the top left, you can see where that star is located. Um, this project site is in zone 2B and 2B2 of the Western Avenue corridor study. And the chart on the bottom uh, shows our alignment with those zoning guidelines. Um, and not only alignment, but shows that we are substantially below um, the maximum heights and FARs that were contemplated in the zoning. Uh, the maximum floor, floor area ratio for this zone is 3.5. We're proposing a project that's a 1.6 FAR. Um, we comply with lot coverage and our height is significantly below the maximum height with the tallest part of our building being at 80 feet versus 175 feet. Uh, another important element here is the complete streets that we'll be building along Western Ave um, that align with the city's complete street guidelines. We're removing all curb cuts from the Western Avenue side of the project to allow for protected bike lane and wide sidewalks. All vehicular access will be from the north side of the site, which is off of McDonald Ave. Next slide, please. Uh, this image just shows uh, 
an elevation of 287 Western Avenue, which is in the center of the screen. The dotted lines represent the maximum heights that would have been contemplated uh, and shows how we've designed a project that steps down from the taller building to the west at 305 Western Avenue um, as you step down towards some of the lower scale buildings at the art house in zone three. Uh, next slide, please. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Matt Pierce from Perkins and Will, who is gonna talk about the architecture and site plan. Hello everybody, good morning. Thanks for having us. Um, this view, this view uh, is from Western Avenue looking at, um, as Mike was describing on the left-hand side is the uh, three-story lab and office volume that's technically a two and a half story building. We've sort of the back, the Northern portion of the third floor is mechanical penthouse, but we fronted uh, that third floor uh, facing Western Avenue with that active use of the lab and office space. So you have those active windows overlooking the street. Uh, on the right-hand side, stepping down in height to a two-story building is that co-working space that Mike was describing, uh, the ground floor of which is open to the public. And then in between those two volumes is the uh, public courtyard, which has a beautiful garden and will be a kind of unique, um, intimately scaled space within the neighborhood. Next slide. Uh, if we go around to McDonald Avenue, um, here we're looking at the uh, northwest corner of the building. In the foreground, kind of between those two trees, is the um, parking entry. And at the far kind of left end of this view is the uh, the two EMS bays. And as you can see, we've kind of set back the mechanical screen on the top, uh, top of the building to reduce the height impact of that and uh, vary the massing along the street to sort of break up the uh, scale of the elevation. Next. Um, and as Mike described, you know, we are removing all of the uh, vehicular um, curb cuts along Western Avenue and now building out the uh, complete street components to really improve that streetscape here. Um, you can see there are two points of entry on Western Avenue to the building. There's the uh, to the pink bar, which is a co-working space. There'll be direct access for the public into that space um, just as you enter the courtyard. And then uniquely, the lobby uh, for the main entry to the building is actually at the far end, north end of the courtyard. So you'll pass through this kind of beautiful um, green courtyard space uh, as you enter the building. On Off of Speedway Avenue on the right-hand side is a, a pedestrian entry and the bike room entry off of Western, I'm sorry, off of Speedway Avenue. And then from McDonald, the black uh, arrows there indicate on the left, the parking entry and to the, on the right side, both the loading and the EMS space, uh, which has two bays for two vehicles. Uh, in the northeast corner of the site. Next. Uh, and this is just zooming in on the courtyard. Um, and we really think this is a, a unique aspect of the project that will really enhance uh, the experience of the neighborhood and create uh, a unique public space of a unique scale that doesn't exist elsewhere and kind of fits in nicely into the ecosystem of all the different scales of public spaces in the neighborhood. So in the left-hand plan diagram, the blue zone is a more hardscape zone, which can have some flexible speed, um, seating and really works to enhance the experience of that co-working space, making that uh, an indoor outdoor experience when the weather is nice. And then the purple zone is a viewing garden, uh, which again, will create a nice kind of pocket park of nature within this neighborhood that um, the public can enjoy and will also be sort of a transition zone to the uh, public entry of the building. Next. I'll hand it back to Mike. Thanks, Matt. Um, on this next slide, we just wanted to highlight some of our transportation benefits. In addition to the small scale of the project, we've also tried to reduce traffic impacts to the neighborhood. Uh, we're providing a parking ratio that is 50% of BTD's maximum recommendation. So we'll be providing 36 below grade parking spaces that'll be accessed from the north side of the site as Matt described. Um, this is a 50% reduction in the parking that currently exists on site. There are currently 72 spaces uh, that's getting cut in half to 36. Um, we're also providing indoor bike storage, uh, making a blue bike station contribution, have electrical vehicle charging stations, and um, as we mentioned, completing the streets uh, per the Wacker Z study in the city's complete street guidelines. Next slide, please. Uh, and then just uh, summarizing some of our project benefits, um, we're really excited that we're able to keep Boston EMS in the neighborhood without any downtime and provide a brand new facility for them, um, reducing impacts from the scale of our project and building something that is going to be additive to the ecosystem rather than competing with it. Um, we think that the low density here will fit in nicely with the rest of the neighborhood. 
um, and create a nice space that will uh, enhance the community, enhance uh, the life science ecosystem and the rest of the neighborhood. So with that, that concludes our presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions anyone may have. Thank you, Mike. <clears throat> questions, comments from the commission? Can you take the uh, presentation down, Mike, or whoever's in charge? Thank you. Going on. Uh, questions, comments? Hi, I had a quick question. Just, um, yeah, I have a question. Um, not, thank you for, I think, a really great presentation. Just as a, a quick question on uh, why the 50% reduction in the parking requirements for BTD? Uh, we were trying to minimize the amount of single occupancy trips to the site. Uh, given the use uh, in the smaller scale companies, um, we're going to promote use of the great public transportation that's here on site and encourage people to use uh, buses, uh, access to the T, the commuter rail. This is a really great location for that. So we think that will be a good sell for um, our prospective tenants. Okay. Any other questions, comments from the commission? Any uh, public testimony, Jeff? Uh, yeah, we do. Uh, John Cusack. Go ahead, John, unmute yourself. Uh, good morning, Chair Hurley and commissioners. My name is John Cusack. I live at 186 Washington Street in Brighton. Uh, this is a good looking project. Future tenants represent opportunities for small business growth and future jobs. It's under the guidelines for WACA Z and it maintains a temporary and then permanent home for Boston EMS in a rapidly developing area. I urge you to support the map amendment for plan development area 148 at 287 Western Ave. Thank you so much. Thank you, John. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Jeff. At this point, we'll close out this portion of the hearing. We'll go into our business session. Any questions, comments, motions? I agree with Ricardo. I thought this was a very clear and concise presentation in the project. I, I think the scale is, is quite appropriate for this area. Um, I, I'm, I'm glad to see the the scale of it versus the envelope that that could have happened. So I I'm very supportive and I'd like to make a motion, Mr. Chair, that we approve map amendment application number 774 development plan for plan development area number 148 287 Western Ave Alston map 7A 7B 7C 7D and 7B slash 70. Second. Motion a second. Any discussion on the motion? Harry Namador, roll call. Jill Hatton? Yes. Michael uh, Nichols? Yes. Nelson Arroyo? Yes. Nelson, was that a yes? Yes. <laughs> Is David Ma with us? No, I don't have him right now, Jake. All right. All right. My pro. Drew Left? Yes. Aisha Miller? Yes. Midori Morikawa? Yes. Ricardo Ostrich? Yes. And I vote yes. Congratulations. Good luck. The unanimous vote. Hey, Thank Jill, you very much. Jill, Jill, just a question. Jill, when you made the motion, did you include that you were approving the development plan as well? I did. I read the script on the agenda, okay. which included Thank the map you. amendment and the development plan. Yes. Thank you. Yep. Okay. 915, public hearing. This is a hearing before the Boston Zoning Commission to consider a petition for the approval of the Sixth Amendment to the Plan Development Area Number 37, Prudential Center Redevelopment. The hearing was duly advertised February 8, 2024 in the Boston Herald. In the Boston Zoning Commission hearing on petitions, the proponent will first present their case, subject to questioning by members of the commission only. 
They're taking support and opposition at the same time. If you're planning to testify, please take the time to verify that your computer microphone is active. Click the hand icon on your Zoom control panel. This will signal staff that you would like to speak. When your hand is raised, your hand icon will be blue. If you are calling into the meeting and would like to testify, please dial star nine to raise your hand. When I call for public testimony, a member of the staff will announce your name and allow you to speak. You must unmute your microphone. Your webcam will not be active. Please give your full name. Any group affiliation announce whether you support or oppose the petition. Each speaker will be allowed up to two minutes. If necessary, I'll advise you when you have 30 seconds remaining. At that time, please summarize your remarks so the meeting can continue and others may be heard. Finally, the proponents will allow a brief five to 10 minute period for rebuttal if they so desire. Please begin the presentation. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, the proposal before you is for the Sixth Amendment to Plan Development Area Number 37, the Prudential Center Redevelopment, which accompanied an Article 80 large project known as the Belvedere Street Student Housing Project. That project is located at 39 Dalton Street in the Back Bay within the PDA Number 37 area. This was approved with the BPDA board on January 18th, 2024. The proposed project is for an interior renovation of the approximately 250,000 square foot south tower of the Sheraton Hotel and a change of use to allow dorm use within this PDA. The proposed renovation of the south tower will convert the existing 428 hotel rooms into approximately 856 student beds, along with approximately 18,000 square feet of student amenity space and a renovated publicly accessible outdoor plaza. The project will also contribute $256,000 to the city of Boston for proposed pedestrian and roadway improvements along Belvedere Street and Dalton Street, including the addition of bike lanes and alterations to the curb regulation of the area to facilitate better pickup and drop off in this busy corridor. The Sixth Amendment to PDA number 37 proposes to allow dormitory use within the PDA. Dormitory use will be permitted only so long as it's also identified and approved in a corresponding institutional master plan. Further, it's permitted for an initial 10-year term with an option to extend by additional 10 years at the BPA's discretion. The initial 10-year term is anticipated to be reflected within Northeastern University's institutional master plan and will be added to that document by a currently pending IMP amendment. This will allow the BPA and the City of Boston to monitor the use for the initial 10-year period and reassess its viability at the end of the term. Northeastern University is just beginning to engage the BPDA on their next 10-year institutional master plan, anticipated to cover a term of 2024 to 2034. This public process will allow for extensive master planning, including a full analysis of the university's footprint and any anticipated growth. We look forward to being back to the commission um, with the IMP in the near future. I'll now hand it off to my colleague, Ted Schwartzberg from the BPDA Zoning Compliance Team to say a few words before the proponent begins their presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Quinn. I'll speak to two slides on the planning and zoning context for this proposal. And uh, this is a proposal that I personally staffed in my former role as Back Bay Neighborhood Planner. Uh, the zoning for the site uh, is an existing PDA, PDA 37. Uh, and uh, Article 41 for uh, change of use in a PDA was also relevant to the review. Uh, in terms of planning, the most relevant plan is Housing Boston 2030. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, the site context is the existing Sheridan Hotel building, which is uh, a stone's throw from the Prudential Green Line Station. Next slide, please. Uh, as Quinn noted, uh, in uh, the underlying zoning, uh, dormitory use is a conditional use, uh, and that forms the substance of this uh, review. Uh, in terms of the dimension, there's no change since uh, it's an existing building that will be reused, and uh, the building itself preceded the establishment of this PDA in 1990. Uh, in terms of uh, planning, uh, the Housing Boston 2030 plan um, advocates for provision of increased uh, housing opportunities for students in institutional housing, in uh, university-affiliated housing, and this is very consistent with that goal. Uh, and then uh, this uh, proposal also is compliant with the city's bike parking guidelines. Uh, with that, I'll now turn it over to the proponent team. Thank you very much. Thanks, Doug. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much. This is Frank Stearns from the law firm of Holland and Knight. And with me is Teddy Fogelman from Hawkins Way, representing the ownership of the project, Julie Recker from Gensler. Um, and we also have our partners in this project, Northeastern University, 
um, available to participate. Um, our, our presentation will be uh, a bit shorter than the previous excellent presentation because as uh, Quinn and Ted just noted, we're not really building anything. You know, the existing, the impetus for this project was that the old two tower Sheridan Hotel had become um, a significantly underutilized hotel. Uh, there was identified in the city's planning studies a substantial need for additional uh, institutional affiliated student housing. Um, and the proposal here by the proponent Hawkins Way is to separate the South Tower and the North Tower in the interior lobby. I'm sure you've all been to the Back Bay Sheridan and you know when you go in the lobby, you can access either the North Tower or the South Tower of the hotel. There will be interior demising work done to separate this, those two so that the existing entrance to the hotel will remain uh, where it is and the new entrance to the student housing dormitory will be from the exterior plaza. Uh, next slide. So this project has been designed consistent with the uh, plan development area, which has been in effect in the Prudential Center since 1990. Um, we think it's important to note that there have been multiple amendments to this PDA over the years to accommodate uh, new buildings and new uses as they've uh, evolved over the course of time in the Prudential Center. We're only proposing, as, as Quinn noted, to modify the use of the South Tower, which will become the exclusive dormitory. Um, and uh, it will be done in affiliation with our tenant, Northeastern University. Um, next slide. So you can see here that this existing plaza is one area where we're gonna be making substantial improvements. This is where presently there's a pretty uh, distressed and tired old brick uh, plaza, which is a, a entrance to the former retail locations uh, that could be accessed both from the inside of the lobby of hotel as well as uh, this exterior area. Um, this is where the new Northeastern entrance is going to be. There's going to be uh, you know, a state-of-the-art security entrance for students to come and go, um, and there's going to be uh, a substantial improvement of the plaza with um, amenities, including seating, uh, bicycle accommodations, and most significantly, an extensive amount of new uh, and improved landscaping so that the area is a more of an attractive uh, exterior area and an attractive entrance uh, to the dormitory. Uh, next slide. This is just a rendering of some of the uh, a pictorial rendering of some of the landscaping improvements. And in addition, as, as Quinn mentioned, uh, the project proponent is going to be making investment in city projects in the area. They're going to give providing funding for the city to do under the city's direction to do uh, pedestrian, bicycle and roadway improvements in the immediate area. There's going to be a substantial contribution to a bike share program as well as multiple locations where uh, students who use the dormitory can uh, park and store their bicycles, both weather protected inside the building, as well as some exterior uh, bicycle uh, accommodations. Um, as noted, the project has been through extensive community review. We really appreciate the cooperation and work of the BPDA staff and the approval we received last month from the, from the BPDA board. Uh, we had an IAG, we had IAG meetings and community meetings. Uh, we had extensive input, which gave rise to a lot of the uh, positive suggestions for funding of public improvements and landscaping improvements. Um, and we're very pleased that um, we feel we have a, a strong community support to basically uh, contribute to meeting the city's um, affordable housing goals, taking some pressure off the uh, community where now there will be um, you know, permanent residence for students um, and, and the ability to free up some apartments in the neighborhood for, for non-students. And um, we really appreciate everybody's support on this. And we're available as well as folks from Northeastern if you have any questions. And um, we thank you um, for your consideration. Thank you, Frank. You take Could the... Uh... Could I ask a question of Quinn? Maybe? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go um, ahead. I, I, yeah. I noticed in the materials that you were going to offer the students um, a bike rack that could be installed in their room. 
And I think that was a big part of the bike storage strategy. And I was curious if you could just explain that because obviously people have to want to use it for it to work. And I, I'm not familiar with that. And so could, could you explain how you do that in these dorm rooms? You, you offer each occupant some type of, um, installate installed item that they can stick their bike up on the ceiling or how does that work? I think someone either from the Hawkins way or the Northeastern team might be best suited to answer that. Yeah. Or, I can, uh, okay. So our first option is not actually the, the bike storage. We're building out a bike room um, just adjacent to that plaza. Um, I think that bike room will have uh, between 50 and 100 bikes. Julia, can you remember that? Or do you mind just jumping in with it? Um, so that'll be the first option for the students to use. If that room reaches capacity and there is a need for an individual student to want an additional place to store their bike, then they would store it in their room. Uh, ownership would work with the operations team to install it in the room, um, and then the student would be able to utilize it. But just want to make clear that is not our like it's not the first option for the students the first option is a dedicated bike room that's adjacent accessible from the street and that dedicated bike room is secure weather protected and only for the student residents mm -hmm. okay and 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 but, i mean there are going to be 800 some students there so it's possible you'll get to capacity in that in that room. And so is it just, is it just a hook that you put on the wall and they can stick there by, I just, you know, those, those hotel rooms aren't huge, but, and you're going to have two occupying each room. So just wanted to, or have you used it in another location and it's been fine. I just curious, because obviously it's a big part of the strategy here. And, um, sure. There are... Go ahead. I apologize. No, no, I, I just, I just, uh, wasn't wasn't sure if you maybe you had been using that in some other um, student housing situations. There are a couple different types of racks that are made to hold just two bicycles. So they're appropriate for this size of room and are able to do it in a compact space. And they are often, uh, in this case, wall mounted. Okay, great. Thank you. That's exactly what I was hoping to hear. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Any other? Questions or comments from the uh, commission? Well, public testimony, Jeff. Uh, yeah, I have uh, one raised hand right now, Kathy Spiegelman. Kathy, go ahead, unmute yourself. Sorry, I just, I wanted to be available for anybody who wanted to ask a question of Northeastern. I'm Vice President and Chief of, of uh, Planning, Real Estate and Facilities. I was going to jump in on the bike question, but it feels like it's already been answered, so. Thank you, Kathy. Stand by. <laughs> okay. I do not have any other raised hands. All right, thank you, Jeff. We're going to close out this portion of the hearing and we're going to enter our business session. Questions, comments, motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we approve the Sixth Amendment to the Plan Development Area Number 37 Prudential Center Redevelopment. Second. second. Motion and second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call. Jill Hatton. Yes. Michael Nichols. Michael Nichols. Yes. Thank you, Michael. Michael Demella. Yes. Nelson Arroyo. Hoping you hear me this time. Yes. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Uh, Drew Leff. Yes. Aisha Miller. Yes. Midori Morikawa. Yes. Ricardo Ostrich. Yes. And I vote yes. Eight nothing unanimous. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take care of the students. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.
Nine thirty public hearing. <clears throat> is there a hearing before the Boston Zoning Commission to consider a petition for the approval of map amendment application number seven seventy five and a petition for approval of development plan, plan development area number one four nine, one zero three North Beacon Street, Brighton. The hearing is duly advertised February eighth, twenty twenty four, in the Boston Herald. In the Boston Zoning Commission hearing on petitions, the proponent will first present their case and subject to question by members of the commission only. We are taking support and opposition at the same time. If you're planning to testify, please take the time to verify that your computer microphone is active. Click the hand icon on your Zoom control panel. This will signal staff you would like to speak. When your hand is raised, your hand icon will be blue. If you're calling into the meeting and would like to testify, please dial star nine to raise your hand. When I call for public testimony, a member of the staff will announce your name and allow you to speak. You must unmute your microphone. Your webcam will not be active. Please give your full name and a group affiliation announce whether you support or oppose the petition. Each speaker will be allowed up to two minutes. If necessary, I'll advise you when you have 30 seconds remaining. At that time, please summarize your remarks and the meeting can continue and others may be heard. Finally, the proponents will allow a brief five to 10 minute period for rebuttal if they so desire. Please begin the presentation. Thank you again, commissioners. The proposal yep. before you is for a map amendment and PDA development plan for plan development area number 149, which accompanied an Article 80 large project known as the 103 North Beacon Street project in the Brighton neighborhood of Boston. This project is approved by the BPDA board on January 18th, 2024. The proposed project is for a mixed use building containing approximately 245,000 square feet of gross floor area that includes ground floor retail space and core shell lab ready space in the remainder of the building. The project includes parking for up to 196 vehicles and will be designed to at least lead gold standards. The project will construct low stress bike lanes along Arthur Street and North Beacon Street to link into the broader community network. And the proponents will provide a $75,000 contribution to support ongoing work at nearby Ringer Park. I'll now hand it over to my colleague, Ted Schwartzberg from the BPDA Zoning Compliance Team to say a few words before the proponent begins their presentation. Thank you. You guys, the only one working over there, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> it's a big Ted and Quinn month. There you go. Indeed, thank you, commissioners. Uh, Ted Schwartzberg, uh, and I'm covering this one for my colleague, Ben Zunkler, who couldn't be here today. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I will now present three slides on the planning and zoning context. <clears throat> the zoning for this area is the Guest Street Local Industrial District, uh, L2, and this is uh, a PD eligible, PDA eligible site. Uh, two plans informed staff review of this proposal. The By Brighton Guest Street Planning Study and Urban Design Guidelines, uh, which was adopted in 2012, as well as the Austin Brighton Mobility Plan adopted by the BPDA Board in 2021. Uh, policies that informed our review are the Smart Utilities Checklist, the EV Readiness Policy, Complete Streets, BTD Parking Maximums, Bike and Parking uh, regulation or Guidelines, and Transportation Demand Management Guidelines. Uh, the neighborhood context is that uh, this is um, adjacent to the Boston Landing T Station, and uh, North Beacon Street represents uh, the edge between the residential neighborhood to the south and uh, the newer mixed use district to the north that's served by the station, uh, Boston Landing and BTA Station. Next slide, please. The 2012 planning study uh, looked at this site uh, and recommendations included active public realm at the ground floor, a mixed use building, uh, gateway to future development and, and the T. Uh, Arthur Street was envisioned as the gateway and main connection street from North Beacon Street to the T station as illustrated uh, on the image on the top. And it was envisioned that heights would step down uh, towards North Beacon Street. Uh, in terms of the other plan, the Alston Brighton Mobility Plan, uh, goals include increasing access and mobility choice for all road users, improving bike facilities along North Beacon Street, improving and raising crosswalks and landscape improvements leading from North Beacon Street and the neighborhoods of the South to the T station to the North. Next slide, please. Uh, the zoning uh, that was recommended by that neighborhood plan in 2012 uh, was not implemented and uh, still has not been implemented. So this has uh, the industrial zoning that uh, preceded that planning study still in place. Um, however, um, 
the use and the dimensions proposed are consistent uh, with the neighborhood plan. Uh, office and lab uh, was envisioned as uh, a potential use for this site to provide economic opportunity. Uh, and while the height and massing uh, is not uh, perfectly consistent with the recommendations of the neighborhood plan, it does uh, preserve the spirit of that plan in terms of stepping down the massing uh, as you get closer to North Beacon Street. And as I noted earlier, this is not <coughs> exceeding uh, zoning that was implemented as a result of that plan. Uh, this is the underlying zoning that we have in this area that uh, preceded the plan. Um, in terms of public realm, uh, this this proposal does a, a great job in terms of improving uh, side, sidewalks and streetscape. And then also it's compliant with the complete streets guidelines, transportation parking maximums, as I mentioned earlier, uh, and green building and resilience measures, including uh, lead gold. Thank you very much. And with that now, I turn it over to the proponent team. Thanks, Seth. Great, thanks, Ted. Uh, good morning, everybody. Phil Casey, CBT Architects here. Um, so we'll start with the neighborhood aerial here, just to orient everybody to the project. So you can see 103 North Beacon Street in orange, the project at the corner of North Beacon and Arthur Street, really in the foreground there. And then just to the north, you get a sense of the guest street core, that incredible growth and density and height that's taken along or taken place along the Mass Pike. Uh, you can see heights of 235, 200, 160. And then as Ted noted, as we step south towards the neighborhood, 103 North Beacon Street stepping down to 92 feet, really mediating the scale between those higher heights along the Mass Pike and the lower scale in density of the residential neighborhood in Brighton. Um, also, interestingly enough, you know, really transformative for this neighborhood is the introduction of the MBTA commuter rail station, the Boston Landing Station, which is just at the end of Arthur Street uh, between those two buildings there and really sets up Arthur Street is a community connector. The idea of inviting the community in and connecting them to transit and therefore, really, we feel setting up the 103 North Beacon Street as a gateway site. This idea of a front door to the neighborhood, welcoming them in, bringing them into this new and evolving district and all the vibrancy that it has as well as to transit. So the idea that 103 North Beacon Street not only holds a street wall, but is really a visible marker of that gateway uh, when we think about the design. Uh, next slide, please, Ted. Uh, and then to the building itself, obviously a 245,000 square feet core and shell life science building. Uh, six stories, uh, like I said, 92 feet to the top of the occupied floor, and then a mechanical penthouse on top of that. Uh, FAR 3.65 and the parking space is all below grade of 196 feet. And then you can see the massing in the building, as Ted had mentioned, stepping down contextually to North Beacon Street, holding that street wall, but really um, decreasing sort of the visual uh, dominance of that mechanical penthouse. And then a setback along Arthur Street as well. You can see the main entrance of the project in the center along Arthur Street too, activating that um, passageway and that connector back to transit in Boston. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and then just a little bit about uh, the compliance with the BPDA's mechanical penthouse design for labs, you know, uh, fully compliant with that and thinking about really the prime tenants and the goals of that, of the idea of integrating those mechanical penthouses with the architecture. So uh, we minimize the visual impact to the community. And I think we've done that here, both volumetrically with a setback of the mechanical penthouse, and then really integrating that into the architecture you'll see. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so a view here from the corner of North Beacon and Arthur Street, you can see the, the main entrance along Arthur there, and really that stepping form uh, that really steps its way down to North Beacon Street with occupied terraces for the idea of, of health and wellness and outside air for the occupants, but also that three-story reading along North Beacon Street. Um, also, excitingly, a very active ground floor plan. You can see all those adjacencies along North Beacon, as well as down Arthur, uh, the color there, the idea that retail amenity spaces, multiple entries to those spaces will be engaging the public realm all along those edges. Again, facilitating that pedestrian movement um, from the community, North Beacon, uh, down Arthur Street into Boston Landing in the commuter station. And then architecturally, the architectural language really sort of building off the industrial heritage we feel like of the neighborhood, this contemporary industrial look with these large bay windows and sort of black and steel frames. And then really integrating, you can see that mechanical penthouse with this layered approach to the architectural language. Um, really, we think contextualizing the building uh, within this kind of evolving neighborhood. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and then to the ground plane in the public realm here, this is a landscape plan. You can see 
uh, oriented towards Arthur Street in the bottom with the main entrance to the Life Science Building along Arthur Street. Uh, but the page left is North Beacon Street and the idea of really setting the building back 23 feet, a, a gracious dimension to allow everything for that pedestrian movement. It also allows for a green strip along North Beacon Street, which is is really lacking that greenery right now and how this starts to participate in that landscape component. Um, still leaves about 10 feet for a pedestrian corridor for that movement towards transit down Arthur, as well as a zone for seating, et cetera, along as part of the uh, the retail and amenity spaces that will all be fronting along North Beacon. You can see those red arrows being potential entry ways again activating that whole sequence pedestrian sequence and then down Arthur Street uh, similarly about a 17 foot setback from the curb edge uh, maintaining that 10 foot pedestrian zone and as then we get farther down Arthur Street um, the curb line flare <laughs> more seating more open the idea of those amenities and retail to spill out into the public realm and then Hitchboard Street and Herrick Street are really sort of secondary streets but still allowing enough dimension to get greenery and uh, street trees along those to really improve the whole neighborhood there. Um, you'll notice also along Herrick Street is the entrance to our parking and our loading again kind of a secondary street maintaining North Beacon and Arthur primarily for traffic um, uh, bike lanes and, and conforming with all the city of Boston components to that and really facilitating the movement along those two spots. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and then just some street sections again to give you the scale of the public realm on the upper right there is a street section through North Beacon Street. You can see again that 23 feet to the curb edge in the building face 13 foot six um, beyond the green strip those street trees allowing for that ease of pedestrian movement around the building. Uh, similarly, when you go to the uh, below that, that section is along Arthur Street, maintaining that ease of pedestrian movement, 17 feet to the curb edge, maintaining that greenery strip, uh, the street trees coming along with the paving. Um, and then to page bottom left, uh, you can see Herrick Street, again, kind of those secondary streets, a much smaller scale for the sidewalk. We don't imagine as much pedestrian activity, but still maintaining the um, street trees and that green edge or all the way around the building. Uh, next slide, please. And then just a few um, three dimensional views to give you the idea of the experience of the pedestrian experience around the building. This is looking east down North Beacon Street as you come upon the building. So again, those retail frontages you can see in the door entries, that green strip, the street trees and that very gracious proportion allowing that pedestrian movement along North Beacon, canopies and signage articulating and activating that building edge. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, similarly, moving farther down North Beacon Street, giving you a sense of that retail spillout. The idea of also maintaining that dimension to allow for street um, uh, street seating as well to activate that public realm and invite the community in and around the corner. Uh, next slide, please. This is now turning the corner, looking down Arthur Street towards Boston Landing and the Boston Landing MBTA stop. Again, activating the edge with amenity space, uh, retail entries. Uh, and still maintaining that green strip, you can see the bike lane, maintaining that pedestrian corridor down Arthur Street, maintaining that connection to transit for both bike and pedestrians. Uh, next slide, please. This is a view along Arthur, really, of the, the building entry, the lobby to the Life Science Building, and, and giving relief in that street edge, adding some more depth to it is this sort of moment in the streetscape as you're moving along in sequence. Again, amenity and retail on either side of that activating. Uh, the lobby and bringing pedestrians to the street. Uh, next slide, please. And then now on, um, sorry, Arthur Street, looking back towards North Beacon Street, you start to feel the very gracious sidewalk as it flares out, um, getting down close towards Boston Landing, allowing for really these sort of moments of respite, the idea of the seating and amenity, building amenity and retail that could spill out. Um, also to the right of it, you can see a proposed uh, blue bike station. So the idea of having these generous kind of public realm streetscape dimensions to allow for those important things that need to happen for the neighborhood. Uh, next slide, please. And then just a quick view of the building, looking again down Arthur Street back towards North Beacon. You can see this step back along Arthur Street, maintaining that three-story um, scale and dimension, and then the building stepping back with that sort of contemporary industrial character. Uh, and I believe that's it. Next slide, Ted. And that concludes our presentation. So I think I'm um, happy to turn it over to um, Kim Tai from IQHQ or to any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Will we take the uh, presentation down? We'll love it. Thank you.
Any questions, comments from the commission? I, I, I guess my only question, just to clarify, I think I read in the materials this was a restricted to um, biosafety one and two. Was that the was that noted in this presentation? I think. Uh, hi, Commissioner. My name is Kim Tai. I'm the Director of Development with IQHU. It's not in our presentation. However, it is noted in our PDA with the building being used primarily for office lab research development, retail, um, parking, and accessory uses, and that the biosafety levels are restricted to one and two. Okay, thank you. No problem. Any other questions, comments? Um, I just want to commend uh, uh, CBT and Phil for the presentation on the public realm. I really appreciate the kind of uh, attention to detail, the the you know the raised uh, planter strips for the trees. Uh, it, it, you're making it really welcoming and very convincing. Any uh, public testimony, Jeff? Uh, yeah. John Cusack, go ahead, John. You good, John? He's unmuted. I don't know uh, what the problem he is. He spoke earlier, maybe. Maybe is there anyone else, Jeff? We can double back to him. Uh, yeah, we'll double back to, to him. Uh, Hector Rivera. Hector, go ahead. You there, Hector? Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Sorry about that. Little issues with the, the mute uh, button, anyways. Uh, so good morning, good presentation, and uh, I'm a business rep with the Carpenters Union, and on behalf of uh, hundreds of carpenters who live and work in the city, we are in support of this project. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Hector. John, are you there? John Cusack? Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Uh, Go good morning again, uh, Chair Hurley yep. and Commissioners. This is uh, John Cusack, 186 Washington Street in Brighton. Uh, this project's designed with the multiple entries and the step down towards North Beacon and Arthur is attractive. I appreciate the efforts around sidewalks and the streetscape. In the future, tenants represent opportunities for economic growth and future jobs in Boston. I urge you to support map application number 775 for plan development area number 149 for 103 North Beacon Street. Thank you. Thank you, John. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Jeff. At this point, we'll close out the uh, this portion of the hearing and we'll enter our business session. Questions, comments, motions? I, I just wanted to say too, um, and as Ricardo noted, I, I, I this building just, in, in the scale of it, uh, I thought was good, and but but it's just such a transformative development. Uh, having gone to that Wolfers Lighting over the years in Boston Volvo, I, I mean, I've been on that street years and years and years. It is, it is amazing. I think the just the at first it looked like it was uh, using a lot of the site coverage, but I think the way that they've um, handled the the the, the streetscape and the greenery uh, is exquisite. So I, I was just, I was in, I, I, I really think this is a real masterful development for this site, just knowing what it's been for all the years and how it connects to Boston Landing and all the guest street development. I think it's a good, um, there's consistency and there's, there's uh, it, it just, and with the, with the um, commuter rail, I think that it's just, it's a great way to take advantage of a lot of the other elements in this whole area. So commend the developer for pulling that all together. Uh, I'll make a motion to uh, approve a map amendment application number 775 development plan 
for plan development area number 149, 103 North Beacon Street, Brighton, map 7A, 7B, 7C, 7D. I second. Motion and second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call. Jill Hatton? Yes. Michael Nichols? Yes. Michael DeMella? Yes. Nelson Arroyo? Yes. Drew Leff? Yes. Aisha Miller? Yes. Dory Morikawa? Yes. Ricardo Ostrich? Yes. And I vote yes. So that's a unanimous vote. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Nine forty-five public hearing. There's a hearing before the Boston Zoning Commission to consider a petition for the approval of development plan for Phase One A, four ninety-five Dorchester Street, South Boston, within Plan Development Area Number One Four Four, on the dot. The hearing was duly advertised February eighth, twenty twenty-four, in the Boston Herald. Then a Boston Zoning Commission hearing on petitions to propose the proponents will first present their case. The subject to question by members of the commission only. We are taking support and opposition at the same time. If you're planning to testify, please take the time to verify that your computer microphone is active. Click the hand icon in your Zoom control panel. This will signal staff you would like to speak. When your hand is raised, your hand icon will be blue. If you're calling into the meeting and would like to testify, please dial star nine to raise your hand. When I call for public testimony, a member of the staff will announce your name and allow you to speak. You must unmute your microphone. Your webcam will not be active. Please give your full name and a group affiliation and announce whether you support or oppose the petition. Each speaker will be allowed up to two minutes. If necessary, I'll advise you when you have 30 seconds remaining. At that time, please summarize your remarks so the meeting can continue and others may be heard. Finally, the proponents are allowed a brief five to 10 minute period for rebuttal if they so desire. Please begin the presentation. Uh, good morning, uh, Chairman Hurley and commissioners. Thank you. This is John Sissel from Core Investments. Uh, hey, John. Um, morning, John. Sorry, Quinn with the BPDA. I'm just going to jump in and do an intro first. Go right ahead. Sorry about that. No worries. Right. No um, thank you. One last time, commissioners. Uh, again, my name is Quinn Valsich. I'm standing in for my colleague, Nick Carter, who couldn't be here this morning. Uh, the proposal before you this morning is for a project at 495 Dorchester Avenue, contained in the PDA development plan for phase 1A of the master plan for plan development area number 144, the 475 to 511 Dorchester Avenue, also known as Core on the Dot. Located in South Boston, Dorchester Avenue, roughly between Broadway and Andrew Stations, 495 Dorchester Avenue represents the first building in phase one of the master plan. The proposed project calls for the construction of a new 237 unit market rate, 16 story residential building, and a new seven story, 94 unit income restricted mid-rise building for seniors joined by a shared podium. The proposed project will contain approximately 326,000 square feet of gross floor area, including approximately 11,000 square feet of ground floor retail commercial space and below grade parking. I'll now hand it over to my colleague, Ted Schwartzberg from the BPDA zone and compliance team to say a few words before the proponent begins their presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Quinn. Uh, Ted Schwartzberg, and I'm here to present three slides on the planning and zoning context on behalf of my colleague, Eileen Michaud, who couldn't be here this morning. Um, in terms of the planning, uh, this site sits squarely in the Plan South Boston, Dorchester Avenue, also known as Plan Ave planning area. And um, in terms of zoning, uh, that uh, neighborhood plan was not turned into an update to the underlying zoning. So uh, the zoning here is, uh, as in the last instance, uh, a case where the zoning that preceded the planning process is still in place, uh, an LI local industrial two district, uh, which is noted on this slide is inconsistent with the, the plan's vision for growth in this area. However, uh, the zoning has been updated with a PDA master plan overlay, which Quinn noted earlier. Next slide, please. Uh, in, the, in the planning context, um, some of the greatest heights and lot coverage uh, in the planning process were envisioned for this exact site. Uh, uses envisioned were a mix of residential ground floor retail, commercial, commercial offices, R&D, and civic uses. Uh, the plan envisioned created a new uh, armature of streets and open spaces in an area of .av where uh, there are no streets currently, uh, and these streets would be carved out of 
uh, existing private property. Next slide, please. In terms of zoning, um, this complies with the recommendations of the plan and perhaps more importantly, it complies with the more recently approved PDA overlay. Um, it complies with maximum heights and lot coverage. Uh, it's consistent with uh, use recommendations, provides for the street network that I mentioned earlier, and also provides for a network of open spaces where there are none right now. And with that, I conclude my planning and zoning context slides and pass it along to the proponent. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. John. Thank you. Thank you, Ted. Uh, Chairman Hurley and commissioners, thanks. We're once again very thankful to be before you. It's only been a few months since uh, the PDA master plan had been approved, and we are quickly moving toward trying to bring our first building, a residential uh, property on Dot Ave before you today. So it's our number one commitment for 24-25, and we're super excited to uh, be before you again to bring this building. We continue to be very thankful for the uh, community of Andrew Square, the neighborhood, the electives, and of course, the BPDA staff for helping us through this process and bringing this building before you. On the call today, I also have uh, John Burroughs. I don't know if he was promoted to a presenter. Uh, CORE has invested in a JV partnership with John and Greg Minot as a part of this first building, 495.av. And if John's here, he might send his greetings uh, either now or toward the end of the presentation. So thank you, Commissioner. I'll hand it over to commissioners. I'll hand it over to uh, Mark uh, Rosenschein from Trademark Partners. Thank you, John. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Uh, before you, you're looking at an image, if you recall, just a few months ago, as John mentioned, we did the 21-acre master plan, master PDA. Um, next slide. That master plan was broken down into four phases. And so we're before you today regarding uh, phase one, which, as you see, was represented with three commercial buildings, a residential building, an open space, and a network of streets. Next slide, please. And as John mentioned, the commitment was made to bring residential to the project and to the site first. We will be opening a residential building as the first piece to get an occupancy permit. And for that reason, we split phase one into phase 1A and phase 1B. We're here before you for phase 1A, which is in the northeast corner and is the residential building. Um, the three commercial buildings you see and the two open spaces that are the balance of phase one, we're in the process with the BPDA staff, urban design, uh, BCDC. We hope to bring those to you in May or June this year. Uh, so they're not far behind and we're coordinating them with the BPDA staff in terms of design and, and making sure that they work well with this residential building. But for reasons having to do with the timing of affordable housing tax credits, we wanted to move the residential before you uh, as quickly as possible. And so I'm going to ask Michael uh, LeBlanc from UTIL, our architect, to present the building, and then Paula can speak to uh, clients. Thanks, Mark. Um, so, so uh, as as Mark suggests, uh, you know, four, four nine five proposes a mixed use, mixed income residential community, which will provide ninety four affordable homes for seniors uh, in, in a transit transit rich location. Um, you know, it furthers uh, also the the principles of of um, the city of Boston in terms of energy efficiency and sustainability by striving to to reach passive house certification, which is one of the highest benchmarks of energy efficiency that uh, a building of this sort could uh, could could achieve. Um, it also is going to strive to and, and will meet the city of Boston's, uh, Boston's resiliency um, guidelines as well. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, one quick thing while we remain on the slide, Mark, just I want to point out to the commission um, that this building is, is kind of tasked with mitigating between four very different scales here. We've got the, the, the sort of existing um, or four very different contexts. Uh, we've got the context of Dorchester Avenue with its three, four, five, and six story buildings, and also some one story residential build uh, or industrial buildings along it uh, to the to the east of us. Um, uh, Dorchester Ave runs north south in here, so and, and north will will typically be page right on these slides. Um, <clears throat> To the south of us, we're creating a really generous green space, and we want our building to interact with that in all kinds of really um, meaningful ways. We'll talk about that. Uh, then we've got the, the Ellery Street um, context, which is a brand new street uh, being formed here. There's going to be a, a sort of higher massing along that street. And then we also have Alger Street, um, which is going to be um, for practical purposes of the building and access. Mid block is going to be where we access vehicles and, and our service to the, to the site. Next. 
So um, the, the the building, uh, as you can see it here in the lower right hand corner, um, just using this this uh, slide to kind of show the limits of this particular project and its position along Dorchester Avenue. Next slide. Um, just looking at the section here, we wanted to talk a little bit about um, how the building works relative to its larger urban design um, uh, responsiveness. Um, we're trying very hard to mitigate between the scale of Dorchester Ave, which is on the right hand side of your slide, you can see the existing buildings on the opposite side. Um, by creating a mid rise building which is in the scale of the general kind of massing of those buildings along Dorchester Avenue. Um, we then have a, a, a larger building on the other side uh, on Ellery Street here which is a tower which is going to be responsible responsive to the scale of all of the proposed buildings there. So this building really sort of has a, a, a sort of two neighborhood, two scale kind of um, a component to it. In the center of it, we have a shared courtyard between our different uses. I'll talk about this use in just a moment, uh, which faces to the south and also engages um, uh, the open space to the south of the building. <clears throat> We're using uh, uh, the, the massing here to also create the, the differentiation between our uh, our senior affordable housing, the 94 units there, and that is you know a community uh, in and of itself, uh, which faces Dorchester Avenue, uh, as well as the the tower, which has 237 units in it. Um, each of these two buildings, though, we're all one building here. The, the we're using we've got shared amenities um, throughout the building. Um, shared uh, shared services. Um, the building, as you can see on the Dorchester Avenue side, is raised a little bit up above um, above Dorchester um, elevation. That's for resiliency purposes. Um, the the most extreme uh, example or, or case of that is at our our northeast corner, where we have almost five feet of grade change between existing grade and our ground floor. But we, we have a really great strategy we think for helping to kind of resolve and mitigate those those uh, grade differences. Next slide. Our ground floors are uh, activated um, uh, uh, and, and populated throughout with active uses. Um, we paying particular attention to what we what we consider our primary corners, which are the corner of uh, of, of Dorchester Avenue and our open space, as well as Ellery Street in our open space. Those are uh, intended to be um, active retail uses, uh, which are public facing, public engaging. Um, we also have along the, the open space, a, a, a stage area where we um, we're hoping to have a more engaging relationship between the building itself and that open space uh, to the south of us where we can have performances, talks, um, uh, or it can just be a great place to sit and hang out, uh, you know, in the sun and the shoulder months of the season. Um, along Dorchester Avenue, we also have our, um, our senior uh, um, uh, entrance and lobby area. Uh, that whole uh, part of the building along Dorchester Ave is raised up, as I said, anywhere between uh, two and a half feet at the at the far left or southern end of our site up to almost five feet at the far right or northern end of the site. We're creating a strategy of a high road, low road um, sidewalk here where uh, we're trying uh, very hard to create an inviting pathway to get you up to that, um, that, that porch area where there's retail, um, but also taking advantage of that slight uh, grade change between the porch and Dorchester Ave to create a sitting area for the seniors, a kind of whole series of Adirondack chairs or rockers, which will be out um, there kind of be, being able to be undercover, but also looking out over the, the, the street activity. Uh, you can see on Alger Street where we have our parking and loading uh, and some of our uh, mechanical and back of house spaces uh, and our, our tower um, uh, residential lobby uh, activating and facing Ellery Street. Next slide. So uh, just a couple images of the building here. You can see here where we've where, where we've got the mid rise along Dorchester Avenue. This is looking um, sort of to the northwest from Dorchester Avenue, uh, showing the, the the mid rise building, which is um, trying to break down its scale through a couple of uh, moves, um, a slot to kind of break up the length of the elevation, uh, breaking the corners line, which is a which is actually something we, you, you see on the uh, opposite side of the street. So we're being very responsive to those those cues, um, but also you can see the active um, and lush uh, sidewalk um, design uh, along Dorchester Avenue where we've got the raised porch, we have retail, the seniors entrance, um, and really generous tree and planting strips uh, along with um, uh, bike locations and things like that. And to the, to the left of the image, you can see uh, the open space. Next. It's a quick view looking uh, from Ellery Street to the northeast. 
Um, you can see the, the tower is kind of foregrounded here at this bend in the road uh, at Ellery, uh, which creates a, what we think is a really nice focal point um, as, as uh, cars are moving uh, northbound along Ellery Street. To the right, you can see our open space, and you can also see how we are carving the mid-rise uh, into our um, south-facing courtyard to allow more sunlight and air and, and uh, to stream into that space there and make it a much more pleasant and livable space. Next slide. Uh, this is a quick um, view looking north along Dorchester Ave. So Dorchester Ave to our right. Um, you can see that the 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 generous planting area starting at the right, uh, very generous sidewalk um, uh, for people moving along Dorchester Ave. A sloped walkway that gets you up to uh, the slightly elevated area along Dorchester Ave, where, which is our ground floor to keep. Um, all of our ground floor uses out of harm's way in the case of, of um, uh, floodwaters. Uh, you can see we have outdoor dining, active uses, and things like that. And, and further down along here is where the seniors entry uh, is uh, along this uh, end of the building. Next. Um, this is a view looking from our open space in green space to the south towards that stage area. Um, we see this as a great opportunity uh, for, for a community engagement uh, to, to create a great backdrop to the stage, um, uh, to, to create uh, something which could be a mural or a, a, a texture or a pattern. And, and, and we're, we're looking forward to having this dialogue with the community. Uh, but you can also see how that stage um, is going to be set up to, to be able to engage the open space. <coughs> Pardon me, but is also flanked on either side by uh, our retail um, um, uh, active uses um, so that people using the park will have the opportunity to get a coffee or to go for lunch um, or to sit out and just kind of enjoy the sunshine here and, and, and look out over the green space. Next. So I'm going to hand it off to, to Paula Devereaux at this point to kind of go through our PDA uh, compliance. Thank you, Michael, um, Chairman Hurley, and members of the commission. I just wanted to reiterate um, some of the points that Ted Schwartzberg made earlier to so that you can understand that this development plan for 495 uh, Dorchester Avenue is consistent um, with the PDA master plan that you approved in December of 2023. Um, in furtherance of that, one of the things that the master plan requires um, is residential use in this site, which is consistent. This is residential use. Um, and we'll also further um, uh, affirmatively furthering fair housing for the significant affordability that is being uh, proposed with this building. Um, and that's really it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. Thank Last you, Paula. slide for us is just to touch on um, Next slide is community benefits. I think the two things that I would want to highlight. First, this is one of the most uh, uh, contaminated sites in the city of Austin, right? The extensive remediation at the federal level to remove Tosca regulated soils, clean up this site will be a tremendous benefit for the community and the neighborhood. The asphalt lot out there only 10 years ago, you, you weren't allowed to stand on it for more than 10 minutes or you were risking your health. So significant benefit to the community to remediate that hazardous material. And then second, Michael and, and others have mentioned 94 units of serviced and rich income restricted senior housing on Dorchester Avenue, which is a tremendous need in that neighborhood and in the city of Boston um, in a building that is lead platinum, all electric, passive house and compliant with the resiliency standards of the city of Boston. So we think this is exactly what this site and the plan dot av was intending to create. And we're very proud to bring this forward to your uh, for your consideration. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. Any questions, comments from the? Uh, can I just ask a question of Mark Go ahead, on, the, on the public benefits? Um, in the present, in the materials that we reviewed on pages six and page twenty-eight, you went through the public benefits, and can you just explain? There was a there was a a, a notation that linkage from the remainder of phase one, <clears throat> which I assume are the other three commercial buildings are to be used for assistance with financing construction of 495 to be provided for in the PDA for such phase. Can you just explain the um, that phrase? And I, I'm just assuming you're directing linkage from the three um, future component parts of phase one into the 495 uh, affordable, deeply affordable units. Is that kind of the correct interpretation or is there more to this? 
Bill, that is the correct interpretation. I'm going to ask John Barros, who, who also is with us here, to just speak to it for, for a second or two because it's related to that JV affordable partnership. Thank you. Chair Hurley, commissioners, just uh, thank you for uh, the time this morning. And uh, Commissioner Hatton, you are on, you are uh, dead on. It is linkage from three buildings, three commercial buildings, part of the master plan that is coming in phase 1B that are, that's in front of the BPDA now. And, and uh, you will see at some point soon, hopefully, that'll be uh, uh, providing linkage funds that we will use for this building. Um, and so we're super excited to a keep those funds in the neighborhood, which is what you know the policy of the city tries to do, um, and then be be able to provide the affordable housing for seniors who are super excited in working with us in this process in the community. And, and Commissioner Hatton, in terms of timing, that's why I mentioned earlier, Phase One B should be before you in either May or June this year. So there's not a lot of distance in time between when the residential is approved and those linkage-related commercial projects will be before you for consideration. Okay, thank you. That that that's I think the reason I was wondering yeah. about this question of how were you going to build 495 if you didn't have the linkage yet? But thank you. That's um, that's exactly what I was hoping to understand better. So thank you very much. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none, public testimony, Jeff? Uh, yeah, we have a uh, raised hand, Patty McCormick. Patty, go ahead. Good morning, Chairman Hurley and Zoning Commissioner members. I'm Patty McCormick, Patty. Chief member, ASCA Vice President and Andrew Square resident. I appreciate all the hard work that has gone into this project and particularly pleased with the mixed housing with the focus on affordability for seniors, very much needed. Uh, thank you, Core and team, BPDA and BCDC. You should be proud of the results. On the dot, we'll begin the transformation and revitalization of Dorchester Ave, which has been a long time coming. Fully support the project and can't wait to see shovels in the ground. Thank you. Thanks, Patty. I don't have any more raised hands. Thank you, Jeff. At this point, we'll close out this portion of the hearing and we'll go into our business session. Any discussion, questions, motions? Um, I'll make a motion, Jay, to um, that we approve development plan for phase 1A 495 Dorchester Avenue, South Boston, within plan development area number 144 on the dot. Second. Motion is seconded. Uh, sorry, I misplaced my papers there. Uh, we'll do a vote. Uh, Jill Hatton? Yes. Michael Nichols? Yes. Mike DeMella? Yes. Nelson Royal. Nelson? Yes. Drew Leff? Drew Who recused himself from this hearing. I'm sorry. I, 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 you told me that, Jeff. I'm sorry. My fault. Aisha Miller? Yes. Midori Morikawa? Yes. Ricardo Ostrich? Yes. I vote yes. That's eight nothing unanimous. Thank you very much. Good luck. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Wait to see it. Uh, next meeting, Jeff. Uh, next meeting is so it's the 20th. March 20th. Okay. So we canceled the, the 13th. 13th's off. Correct. Everyone knows that, right? The 13th is off. Yeah. And I will be sending an updated memo with some uh, dates. Uh, Please. I'm add second. So we had. We had two dates for each month through May. And I'm going to add a second date, uh, June through the end of the year. We may not need them, uh, but with a lot of stuff that's going through the board and the agency right now, it's good to have them on the, you know, on your calendars. Um, and plus just to refresh your memory, what's coming up in uh, March, April, and May. So 
expect to see that probably today at 20. So, so Jeff, you said March 27th? March 20th. 20th, thank you. Any questions for me? We're not no. going to have any presentation. Kathleen had to jump. So. All right. Thank you, everybody. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.